Welcome back to another episode of Books Closed. This episode is sponsored by Tatsoul. This week we join you from Congress Street Tattoo in beautiful, sunny downtown Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Today, I am joined by the man, the myth, the legend, the tallest human in tattooing, Steve Byrne. Thanks. It's, it's true. I am the tallest tattooer. Do you know any tattooers that are taller than you? No. Me either. <laughs> There's a couple who've had a bid. They've had a claim, but during a a back-to-back -back with witnesses, I've always been the victor. I know who I'm picking when it comes down to the all-star basketball tournament of tattooing. <laughs> You're, uh, you're joining us in Portsmouth to Tattoo for the week, and I heard that you're staying in a notoriously haunted hotel room. Yeah, um, not just the most haunted hotel, but actually the room with the most activity, which um, I was saying to Kim yesterday, I'm not really opposed to some sort of ghostly experience in my life. I've never had one, but... I don't want it to be harmful or anything like that. Let's just see. I will say, last night, <laughs> and Kim's been asking me every day whether there's been any kind of activity. I will say that I was having a shower. I looked at the wall of the shower, and it's like a tile. And you can, you know, if you look at anything for long enough with a texture, you can see things in it. But there was a very mournful face appeared to me. Really? <laughs> in the tile. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> like in the steam on the wall or just no, the pattern? No, no. Like the texture of the tile, the kind of the, mar it's not marble, but whatever the stone yeah. is, they just look to be a very sort of <laughs> sorrowful face. They probably <laughs> carve it in there for tourism. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was no steam. There was nothing like that. I just stared at it and I was like, well, that looks like it could have been taken from some sort of, you know, medieval <laughs> Med medieval image or something like that oh wow some sort of hell scene i don't know but it's an open like definitely to me an open mouth with mournful sort of features and a craggy face i'm gonna photograph it i'm gonna show it to you later yeah you should <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure that the hotel staff would love to hear your opinion yeah, on maybe the i'm wall. just making it up now maybe i'm just wanting to have some sort of like well what if it's not there at all when you go might, back to yeah, take if, a picture if i of go it. back to, to try and photograph it and it's not there at all that will be that'll be spine chilling <laughs> <laughs> well if that was last night then tomorrow morning you'll wake up with like bloody streaks scratches across your back or something well one of the things i read online about the rooms was apparently number 204 is the haunted room that's the what they tell the guests i'm in room 207 that's the real one that's where they did the haunted podcast from and that's where the most activities happened yeah and it says that guests in that room have claim that it feels like somebody's holding their touching their hand in their sleep you know the doorknob keeps rattling things like that yeah the jury's out we'll wait to hear about yeah. what happens i've got a few more nights there yet so yeah if your instagram just goes quiet well i'll know what happened <laughs> <laughs> this will be yeah. your, your last public appearance <laughs> <laughs> no chance of that i'm doing a lot of tattoos while i'm here so hopefully the instagram will be uh, active it's kicking. It's been kicking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. And to the listeners, I do apologize for any construction noise you hear in the background. The, the, the downstairs storefront decided that this morning while we were going to record this podcast, they wanted to totally redo the whole thing. So hopefully that won't be too cumbersome in your ears. Anyway, that's enough about ghosts. This is a, <laughs> this is a tat podcast. And it's a tat podcast where we talk about social media and the internet, as well as technology. So, your use of social media for your work versus social media in your personal life. You don't post pictures of your kids and you don't post pictures of yourself. It's all tattoos. What up with that? Yeah, I resisted Instagram for the longest time. I just thought it was another thing for me to have to worry about and, you know, another job, I suppose, you know, but me and... Um, Chad Keplinger were going to Australia several years ago and he was like, oh, I've got appointments when I'm over there. Have you got any? I was like, no, I've got barely any. No one's even contacted me, you know? There was a few, but very few. I was like, how are you getting appointments? And he was like, oh, there's this thing called Instagram. 
you know, I just put it out on there that I'm going to be in Australia and people contacted me immediately like, oh, I'll get tattooed in Melbourne, Sydney, whatever. So I was like, well, maybe I should get one of these things and use it. And sure enough, I did. And very quickly, I amassed this <laughs> insane amount of followers. And I don't know if it was just the infancy of Instagram or the, um, I don't know. I, I don't even know what it was, to be honest. But I ended up with like over 200,000 followers. And then it just stopped. And I haven't had an increase for maybe a year at this point. Because and everyone who likes tattoos follows your page it, already. It could be, but I also have <laughs> you got like, them all. I also have like, you know, Saudi Arabian sheikhs who follow me, I guess. Like just people who are like, you know, beauticians from Indonesia. Like I just have no idea why these people are following me other than they think that if they post on my Instagram every once in a while, someone might click on theirs and it, you know, leads yeah. you to this, you know, leads you to their Instagram and their importance in the social media world. That's a pretty sound marketing scheme. I, I think so. I mean, I <laughs> definitely have people who I delete their comments on the regular because they're, they're just um, interlopers, you know, they're not tattoo people. They don't have tattoos. They're not looking at it and making any kind of comment on the work that is relevant or even, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that they're not even looking at the image. They're just making a, you know, some sort of standard comment and expecting that, oh, someone might click on me, see my stuff and be interested in waxing or whatever they do you yeah, know? yeah yeah so yeah, I, they, I don't know. they just I, see your number of followers yeah and they wanna... i just yeah I, I mean honestly i would say you know if it is over two hundred thousand followers i bet that there's 10 percent of that that are actually interested in tattooing if i'm being you know honest yeah um i always wonder where all the other people go i don't i don't if know if you I'd... have ten thousand followers you're gonna get like 20 percent back as yeah. far as like interaction and, and people actually seeing it and i don't think it's the algorithm it's just always that way you know, I, I, I don't know if they've done it recently or not. I've never noticed, but I remember a couple of times they had like a, a cull or some sort of, uh, you know, I, I noticed I lost several thousand followers in one day or whatever. Yeah, they clean out inactive the clean accounts. Yeah, whatever you want to call them. I, I don't know what they how they do it, but redundant Instagram accounts, whatever it is. And I actually welcome those. I wish they would do it more often, you know? Like mm -hmm. if, if there is such a thing, I wish they would just get into it and, you know, put everybody who's not active or not relevant to your Instagram out and be like, Hey, if you're not using this account, get off of here. Like, what are you doing? Just clogging up the, the Instagram world, you know, right, <laughs> like, right. for people that are actually using it as part of their job now. And I, I consider Instagram one of several tools in my job, you know, even just coming up here to Portsmouth, I, uh, I put it out and, you know, I knew I was going to be here for, four or five days at least. I ended up staying for nine or ten days, whatever it is, because so many people responded positively to the post. Yeah. And that's that. You know, I'm going to Europe in September. Um, and, I mean, I'm there almost a month and I'm full, like, because of a marketing tool like Instagram. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's insane. I can't even remember how <laughs> I used to travel before Facebook, Instagram, MySpace kind of thing, you know? I, I mean, I, I suppose I'd, MySpace was, I didn't really use that for anything other than, you know, listening to music maybe and putting a few tattoos up, but... Well, I have a pertinent story about your MySpace. You do? Do you remember when you tattooed me? I do, yes. From the MySpace days? Yeah, yeah. Because you were at New York Adorn doing a guest spot and you I posted was. a MySpace bulletin and said, I have an opening tomorrow. Ah. And I wrote back and I said... Hello, Steve. <laughs> I would like to get a tattoo tomorrow in New Did York I? Adorned. Oh, okay. And then I called the shop and then I went down the next day and I got tattooed. Oh, that's great. That's, no, that's, good to, that's, that's really good to hear because I, in my mind now, MySpace was not that relevant as far as it goes, but I suppose it was. I mean, I, you know, there's definitely a few things that, um, no, I definitely remember tattooing you in New York Adorned and I was like a year into tattooing at the time. And I was going to say, it must be a few years ago now because... I think it was 2009, 2009 if I okay. correctly. Yeah, that makes sense because I was living in... Well, I was either living in the US or very, very close to living in the US because that's when I moved here from England. RIP, New York adorned. Like, yep. I was thinking about that a lot this week and how important that shop was to me, you know, um, and many other tattooers from my generation. I'm, I, I texted Laurie this week just to, you know, tell her I'll always be proud I did tattoos at that shop. It was a, it was a, 
Institute. Yeah, it was um, cool. I, I was sad to see it. I was sad to hear the news, but I also understand got to move on to greener pastures or whatever, you know, and I'm glad for everyone that works there that, you know, it's, it's worked out the way it has. Yeah. Yeah. You got to respect a decision like that. Cause you know that no one's going to make it lightly. So yeah. you know, it's for a reason. Well, Alex Binney did it in London recently with Indy U and, uh, that's, that's not a shop I ever worked at, but it's the shop that I have a similar amount of respect for and growing up as a young tattooer in the mid nineties in England, I mean, into you was one of the shops that, you know, I held in very high regard, you know, everyone that worked there. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's sad to see shops closing, but it's also, oh, what are those guys going to do next? It's, it's a nice way to sort of like have a, have a restart, you know? Definitely. So, but going back to what you were talking about, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I don't post, I have, I have three children and uh, a wife and a very nice life in Austin, Texas. But I don't post a lot of my personal stuff on my Steve Byrne Tattoo Instagram account because I just I'm, I'm not comfortable with the intermingling of work and family um, because I just don't know how many you know of the of the several thousand people that are following me I just don't know how many of those are weirdos how many how many probably of those majority are, yeah yes I would say the yeah I would definitely say the majority I mean I don't think it's I don't think it's wrong to say that like there's probably some pretty nefarious people who are following me. You know? right, right. Like tattooing attracts misfits and weirdos. I, I love that about tattooing, but yeah, I mean, social media attracts that tenfold, you know? Oh, and big time. It's just, especially now because it's just, everybody is uh, on it. I mean, some of the stuff I see on there, I mean, it makes me, fr I mean, I, I'm old enough, you know, I'm old enough to remember life before social media and smartphones and stuff. And I kind of fear for my kids in many ways that even my 10 year old, she's just so, she knows about it. You know, she just knows about Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. YouTube before, you know, I mean, in my, when I was 10, that, you know, those words just didn't exist, you know? Right. It was BMX and Game Boy and stuff like that, you know, like those were my kind of words. She's talking to me about, oh, I saw a video on YouTube of a guy and he was drawing manga girls, you know, and I copied it and here's my drawing event. I'm like, that's amazing. So there is benefits to it, you know, like there's, you know, there's. It's just uh, to, it's so different that you can't relate to it. It's such a different life. It. Yeah, it really is. And do you think it keeps people inside more younger kids? Not in my life, not in my family personally, because my wife and I encourage the kids to, I mean, I, I take them on long walks and you know we go out and we do sports and a trampoline in our back garden that's been worth every penny we paid for it you know yeah. because they're, they're active kids you know yeah. and no um, broken arms yet no thankfully Good. fingers crossed yeah <laughs> god there's been a few you know a few teeth busted out that kind of thing but nothing you know comes with the territory scrapes and bruises and stuff but definitely nothing that didn't happen to me when i was a kid you know sure <laughs> But no, not not posting stuff about my children on my work Instagram is the reason I have. I have a family Instagram as well, and that's that's where I post. And most of my 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 siblings, my parents, they all live in the UK still. All my extended family that want to see my life outside of tattooing, they can. They, you know, it's it's an easier way for me to do it with social media than sending out mass texts and stuff like that every every week you know when we're doing something that i've photographed right so it makes sense because you might be someone who's sharing more personal stuff because your family's away and you definitely don't want to put that out to everybody yeah i don't personally see the benefit of that unless it's people it's getting to the people that actually know you and then actually want to see it actually want to see it yeah you know like instances where i'm like why would you put you know i'm looking at my friend <laughs> I'm not naming names, but no, let's, let's, let's not do that. Like <laughs> I, sh I shouldn't go down any kind of avenue about, you know, anyone posting photos of their kids. I just, I just don't want to do it personally because yeah. I just feel like I'm getting, uh, I'm giving away too much of my life to a world that I don't know, like people and personalities that don't, uh, they shouldn't be seeing that, you know, like it's none of their business tattoos that I do. That is I want to put that out there. I want, you know, I, I, I post on my Instagram 
as a way to get people in the shop, not just for me, but also, oh, there might be an interest in the shop. And I think a big reason... I don't know how much of that's going to be... Oh, yeah, we can definitely hear it a little bit, but (laughs) I I think you're loud enough over it where it... it, Good. I'm trying to, like, raise my voice. I'm not... I don't project myself uh, so much... No, Normally, right. but I feel like I had to just then. <laughs> so people who post it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not this loud, booming person. But. <laughs> well, I think that keeping your, your work Instagram so focused is probably a big part of why it gets so much attention because you, you look down your feed and it's just like a wall of, of tattoos. It looks yeah. like a tattoo shop it's, I mean, in I'm, some ways, which I'm, I think I'm is cool. I'm conscious of it. I, I definitely have um, curated a look i suppose you know with the you know that that little 99 cent app that i bought pick frame it's amazing you know i just use the color borders and use that to accentuate the work and make it look fancy enough where people will see it and be like oh right you know and the video idea i mean as soon as instagram started doing that i saw the potential in it immediately where it's like people it's the best. people want to see videos i'd notice the views are through the roof. The comments are through the roof on videos. Mm-hmm. I'll post a pic and it's like 200 views, <laughs> 200 likes or whatever, you know? And yeah. I'm like, well, you know, whatever. Like I, I'm, I'm using that more as my portfolio at this point. Um, my, uh, my friend Vanessa, who's kind of my assistant outside the shop, she made me some blurb portfolios a couple of years ago. And I mean, a, you know, two or three years ago, at least I would say. And, um, I keep wanting to do another portfolio for the shop, but I'm just like, what's the point? Like nobody even looks at them when they come in the shop anymore. Yeah. There might be someone who comes in just to, you know, they, they walk in the shop and, you know, you've got me, Thomas, Tony and Katya who probably just do, we just do our appointments. We don't really do any of the walk-ins. Um, but then you've got, um, you know, the other three guys and they just, if, if we were like, oh, Keenan's going to do that or Bobby or... Donnie is going to do that. They go and they check their portfolio really fast, really quick, just to be like, oh, they can do it. Okay. All right. Yep, they've yeah, done I, tattoos I can, before. I can see that they've, you know, they've got like a little bit of experience or whatever. It's a pretty serious crowd that comes into Rock of Ages. And I, I like that about the shop is it's a good mix of high-end um, custom work and then street walk-ins, you know? Like, so we get a good mixed crowd in there. I mean, that's really ideal to get... Uh, you know the full power of a shop to be at that level where people are really looking for everyone who's there. Yeah, there's a there's a wide, you know, sort of spectrum of styles in the shop as well. You know, yeah. um, I suppose I've had several people tell me like, you know, just over the last couple of years, like, wow, like you guys have got the best shop, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, I think that. I'm glad to hear that. You know, people are out there thinking that as well. And I don't think it's the best shop. To say anything's the best is ridiculous, but I just like the fact that it's associated, that Rock of Ages is associated with the best shops. You know, like that's that's something I'm very proud of, you know. and With a large internet with following. Or without the help of Instagram. That's what I'm, sorry, that, that, that should have been the last thing that I said there. I, I know that we're, I know that that was, that was my point. Yeah. Right. So when you have a, a large following like you do, do you get a lot of weird requests uh, not not tattoos, but like outside of tattooing for other things. Not really. Um, I mean, if I'll get the occasional direct message that is, you know, I love your work. I love your style. I think what you do is great. Can you do this Celtic knot on my son's chest and how much will it be? I'm like, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Yeah. And it just makes no sense to me. I mean, of course I can do that tattoo and I I will, but... What you were just saying about scrolling through my Instagram feed, if that's your reference, if that's where you're going to to check out my work, what did you see in the last 500 posts I made that made you think that I was the best person to do this tattoo that's completely out of my... Well, if they really like your work so much, why do they want the Celtic knot from you? (laughs) Exactly. It doesn't make sense. I mean, uh, you know, there's. I'm not a script person. I'm not really the type of person that, you know, people come to for that. I've got a couple of guys in my shop who are amazing at that you know i'll always if i get people coming in they're like oh i know your wife uh i know your you know your friend or whatever they said to send they should come down here and find you and i'm like oh cool like what do you want to get i want to get like you know life is a dream tattooed across my collarbone i'm like oh like you know (laughs) as much as i want to do that for you um i'm going to 
put you with one of my other guys who's going to do a much better job of it, you know, than I am. Yeah. Um, but that's, I mean, that's, that's also one of the good things about working with Tony is that he's, you know, he's such a good all rounder as far as that goes. Tony would crush that tattoo, you know, like with his eyes closed. I'd be like, ah, do I really want to do this? Like, why am I, you know, I'd, I'd struggle with something like that at this point because I'm lucky enough that, you know, people come to me and they're like, ah, just do what you want. You know, and sometimes that can be a problem too, because what I want to do is, you know, they, they, they really want something pretty simple, but they're like, do what you want. And then I draw something fucking insane <laughs> and I see it in their face and I'm like, look, I'm not, I'm not pushing you in any direction, but you know, this is cool. And I definitely wouldn't want somebody to get something they weren't comfortable with, but more often than not, when they step outside of what they think is what they want and what I draw for them, they're very happy. Have you had at times least, where people are like, Ooh, well, yes, I have. I mean, and at least, you know, I, there's no pressure to ever get tattooed from me. Like in that situation, if I've drawn something straight on you and it's, I always tell people, check it out in the mirror at this very early stage make sure that the size and the coverage and the style is something that you're into. And if it is, we'll refine it and we'll tattoo it more often. I don't think I, I can't remember the last time I had someone look in the mirror with a Sharpie sketch on their arm or chest or whatever, and be like, no, that's not what I was thinking at all. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and yeah, I think, I think at this point, you know, people, the, the people that I'm attracting, are, they're, they're pretty trusting of stuff because Instagram, you come back to it, you see how much I post on there, how much I use that as a way to get past that boundary of trust, you know, because if you follow me for even a couple of months, you're probably going to see like a couple of dozen posts and they're like, oh, well, this guy tattoos a lot. It's clean and cool looking. <laughs> if I say so myself. <laughs> I would agree. And, you know, um, that 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 first hurdle's gone you know that trust that kind of like that hurdle of like getting into the shop looking through a portfolio talking to the person it's like you've done that all in your bedroom the night before when you're trying to decide what you want in your appointment with me the next day you know and you've screen grabbed five or six things like i want this i like this 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 and this just go wild and do a combination of all of those things and i'm stoked that people come to me like that and yeah, that's awesome. that's really you know i i could tattoo you know, palm sized tattoos like that for the rest of my life. <laughs> I, would be to I would be totally happy with that being my career, you know, because it's just fun every day, you know. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. This week's episode is sponsored by Tat Soul providing tattoo supplies and furniture to the professional tattoo artist. You can check them out at www.tatsoul.com and on Instagram at tatsoul. Okay, welcome back to the Congress Street construction site. The, uh, the work's coming along really great out there, if you're wondering. <laughs> Let's speak over the hammers and the drills. And I wanted to ask you about your process as of late. It seems that you are drawing on all or most of the tattoos you do directly. Yeah. Um, probably the most fun I've ever had tattooing, you know. Um, it's, it's got to the point where, I mean, I did, the, I did what was called the own books, the first and second one that came out over the last couple of years. And all I was doing was for, for myself was collecting all my stencils and putting them in a book looking at them, referencing them, referencing myself to develop something that I didn't know what it was, just trying to get serious about doing more of a individual style and just kind of this, you know, watered down flash version of whatever people wanted, you know. Um, the books came out really nice. I, You know, it was a really nice experience and something I'm proud of but when people started coming at me with like crazy awkward spaces and I mean I spend most of my life most of my tattoo work uh negotiating other people's tattoos and getting around them and the drawing on um with sharpies was just an extension of that it was just well 
why am I trying to fit this girl head into this crazy gap? Like, why don't I just draw something on that's maybe a little bit abstract, maybe a little bit obtuse, whatever, and see how it looks. And the first few experiments, I, I hate to call them experiments because they're not. I would never do, I would never experiment on somebody's, you know, skin. <laughs> but of course they are experiments in some way because you, you know, when you're drawing on stuff like that, you don't really know how it's going to turn out. Um, I can see it in my head. That's that's a good sign. If you aren't quite as comfortable with, you know, if you if 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 you're a competent enough tattooer, I think that it's it's a really fun way to work. Um, and I'm actually, you know, not bored doing stencil <laughs> tattoos anymore. But when I draw stuff on, I feel like it's just got a it takes on a life of its own. I think of things as I'm tattooing that maybe I wouldn't if I was just following the purple lines, you know? And also I wanted to break away from that kind of, the stencil books that I'd, I'd put out and, um, yeah, just do something that was like, you know, it's forced me to grow. It's forced me to sort of think about what I really want to do with my work. Um, it's allowed me a, a lot more freedom with the customer as well, as far as, oh, I like a snake head and a dagger. It's okay. Okay, cool. Well, let me see the space you want to get. They show it to me. It's a really odd gap. <laughs> there's, you know, there's really no way you can fit something like that in there. But when I draw it straight on there, it magically works, you know. And I could spend half an hour, an hour in the back room drawing it on paper, come out the front, look at the space again, and I'm like, oh, well, that's not going to work at all. You know, like right. it just makes no sense for me to waste my time trying to negotiate these awkward gaps with – um you know, tracing paper and pencil, you know, like I'd rather just draw it straight on there. Do you find that more people are coming to you with the weirdest shaped gaps because they know you can do it? Yeah. And I mean, I tattoo a lot of tattoos. That's, that's a, that's a good thing because generally they're very open-minded. Generally they're not trying to take the pencil out your hand and show you what they want. Yeah. Um, has that ever happened? Uh, yeah, not, not recently. Um, because I just don't tolerate it, but <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's definitely people who are a little bit you know there's definitely people who you know they want to take charge and you know that old saying of you know don't let your idea get in the way of a good tattoo you know I I live by that you know because if you have this thing where you want to get a tiger rampaging through a bunch of bamboo shoots. <laughs> in a space that that just is not going to work, you know, but that's what I want. It's like, well, sorry, but like, you know, what you want and what you've got to work with, it's just not going to happen. I'm, you know, I'm. So you say, how about you get part of a tiger's face with a cyborg helmet on it? (laughs) (laughs) It But it works better. But, you know, like there is, uh, you know, there's a way of doing that where you can, edit it to fit the space you know like oh there's a i don't know half a fudo's face instead of a full fudo's face will fit in that gap way better you know Mm -hmm. like and you still know what it is exactly yeah and you know as long as it's readable and you get your message across i think it's a success you know um and if you fill the gap it's a success because you know most of the people i tattoo they're on course for a full bodysuit and i love that i love that they're collectors and that they're managing you know it's like oh i've got this space between my butt cheek and my thigh I want you to fill (laughs) well let's not do anything too you know you know you don't want to put like a a side profile of a woman's face in there you don't want to put like you know something too sort of detailed in there yeah let's do a bunch of biomech let's you know make it bend into that space that you've like randomly got left with you know and you know for me reaching back into like the early mid 90s styles that I'm kind of gunning for right now at this point it's it's what I loved about tattooing when I first you know started picking up magazines and looking at uh all the the people that really sparked my sort of interest in tattooing back then like 93 94 ish um that's that's kind of what I think about when I tattoo now like I'm I'm constantly thinking about you know who's actually pursuing that style right now not many people you know there's a bunch of uh copycats all over the world you know i mean you know i don't think i need to explain that when there's a there's a group of people who are the leaders and then there's a fucking thousand 
followers, you know. Um, I'm trying not to look at people's work too much because it's just stagnant, man. Like, you know, I, you know I, I'm saddened by people who are obviously very skilled tattooers, but they're just copying their favorite tattooers' tattoos, you know. And I think that that's not contributing to tattooing in the way that you should be um, if you have some sort of artistic tendency, if you want to get up every morning and think, oh, cool, I'm going to tattoo today. Try doing something different, you know, like, and I, I feel like I do that because tattooing's fantastic. I could do, I, I could tattoo anything for the rest of my life and be happy. But if you're doing it where it's a pure joy to do it, I guarantee you're going to, you're going to enjoy your job way more. And I'd say it definitely comes across in your work, especially lately, as you've been pushing into the, those older styles and, and yeah, imagery and, and stuff. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I, I feel like it's... Um, uh, I'm just trying to think of the... I don't, I'm trying not to offend anybody or trying not to like make it sound like I'm the best tattooer <laughs> because I know my abilities, I know my limits, and I'm just trying to work in a in a... In a way that I can find joy in my work, you know, and not get stagnant or bored with it, you know? Well, at a certain point, I think it, it really pays to focus on a thing. So it's not even about your limitations yeah. of what you can and can't do, but yeah. there are certain things that just, that's not going to contribute to the path that you're on. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I can say that, you know, 20 plus years into this job, I'd still love it more than I can tell you. I remember when I was getting tattooed by bugs, at Evil from the Needle in London. I've, I've told this story a bunch of times, but I love it. And it's it's actually stayed with me over the years. He told me when he was tattooing me that, and I was one or two years into tattooing, and he was he looked at me like right in the eye, and he was like, listen, man, you will never, ever, ever love tattooing as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I was floored by that, you know, at the time, and I still am in many ways because... You know, whether you like that guy's work or not, he has a passion for tattooing, you know, and whether you like his stuff or not, he's, he's, he's stuck with his stuff. And, you know, I, I feel like he's enjoyed his career more than most tattooers, you know, so there's something to be said for that, like actually just taking joy in your work and, you know, not worrying about whether it looks like I'm trying to do like Smith Street style tattoos or I'm trying to do like, you know, blackout stuff you know whatever it is whatever your like pursuit is um style wise stylistically i mean if you're enjoying it that's great you know I, and i i think you'll enjoy your career but i will say if you can find your own style and your own path it opens up um a greater joy you know with your work yeah and that's i'm sure always been the case but i feel that now it's an uphill battle more than ever because yeah. the the stagnant nature of styles and how people tattoo, I think, is hugely fueled by the way that the internet will create people's tastes. And people just see that stuff, you know, the common things, and oh, that's all sure. that they want. So it, it's so easy to just go with the flow. No, I, I agree completely. I think there's people who want a cool eagle or, a you know, a cool, like, dagger but they've seen that people just outline it and do the most minimal amount of black shading in it now and they think that that's that's a tattoo well it hurts less <laughs> it hurts less and it takes like you know a third of the time to do probably and it should be cheaper but it's probably three it should times be cheaper, as but expensive. It's, it's more expensive because <laughs> you know the people that are doing that seem to be concentrated in you know the cities that cost the most to live and who knows like who knows where that style developed from whether it's like, you know, you've leafed through too many Russian prison tattoo encyclopedias or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just that, that so many people want to get tattooed now, but they don't really want tattoos. So it's the least committal thing yes, to get. And that is. just it's, has fueled the whole style. Yeah. I mean, you can laser that thing off in one pass probably. Yeah. You know, there's some brutal stuff going on out there as well. That's fashionable. <laughs> that's for sure. There's some, yeah. there's some people who are the, the opposite end of the spectrum. They're like just blacking out their, you know, entire neck. I've heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> because, you know, they're, they're trying to get a leg up, you know, and like I'm the most extreme person out there. And I've, I've never really been into extremes. I don't even have my own neck tattooed, you know, like that might be a, 
you know, thing that if I'd done when I was 20, I would be really into mm -hmm. still, but I never did. And the older I get, I'm 40 next month. Like the last thing on my mind is getting my neck tattooed. You know? <laughs> like, I'm, not, right. I'm just, it's not even on my radar at this point, you know? Yeah. Um, and especially with the, I walk down the street here, I'm in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I walked down the street this morning to get a coffee before this. And I saw like three or four sleeves, you know, I mean, like, that to yeah. me, it, right? <laughs> you know, what I mean, I'm not not that I'm knocking Portsmouth, New Hampshire, but I would have expected that in Austin, Texas, or you know, San Francisco, or New York, or somewhere like that. But you know, th there is tattooing is out in the open. It's like, I mean, I I hate the word mandala right now <laughs> because <laughs> it's made it into the general population's vocabulary when they walk into a tattoo shop and you get some customer walking in they're like i want a mandala and they don't really know what they're asking for like they they think and then they show you what they think a mandala is on their phone and it's like some mix of a dream catcher and maybe has like some slight line work that represents a mandala but it's a it's an absolute chore drawing for those people because they've seen seven or eight images and whatever you draw for them it might not be as good as the perfect thing that they found on pinterest thankfully i'm out of that realm a little bit and i don't have to deal with it too much but I feel sorry for the the generation of tattooers that have to deal with that because it's gonna it's gonna kill your spirit a little bit, you know. Like I I feel like it is. It goes back to what I was talking about a moment ago. I think, um, I think the grind of, I mean, I'm I'm kind of speaking to tattooers at this point, but like the grind of a tattoo shop can be, it can be a lot to deal with without that kind of stuff going on as well. So when you add that into the mix, I mean, you know. Tattooing might not seem as appealing as, you know, it did when you first started. Well, how would you suggest that maybe a tattoo or more up and coming, not someone who has the trust of a lot of customers to, to really forge a path of their own? What do you think that they can do to combat that? Is it is it just in how we perceive it and how we take it and deal with it? Or is it more on the, the customers that we can uh, I mean, suggest? I can only speak for my own experience, but, um, you know, you just have to be you have to just treat people with respect and honesty and direct them in a way that um, is good for them. You know, if you get to if you get to be happy with the tattoo you do for somebody, I think that's a bonus. I think I think the customer's experience is paramount. It's the most important thing. They're paying you for a service and that's that. It's a skill in itself to kind of get people to get on board with your idea. Um I'm not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. I'm trying to do what's best for the customer with what they're asking for. I'm not trying to like, you know, yeah, let's tattoo your forehead, bro. Like, no, like, I don't want to do anything like that unless somebody is coming in asking for, you know, I'm not trying to be extreme with people. So I don't think I even answered that question at all. I'm not sure where I was going with that, but. That's okay. I feel like you get the idea. Someone walks in, they want something. It's your job to direct them to the best possible solution for their request. I think that's a skill in itself, and it's something that young tattooers maybe need to stop looking at their phone and talking to people a little bit more. You know, like that. That that seems to me like it's it's kind of key. You know, um, social media is it's it's a damager. Like it's a it's it's damaging society in the sense that. People communicate less. Um, people can talk less, and they're not quite as articulate. Um, I find that in tattoo shops all the time, where people they obviously want something, but they just can't articulate it. They just that might, hold their phone up. Yeah, that mm -hmm. might that might come back down to just staring at your phone for twelve hours a day. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thankfully, I'm, thankfully, I'm from a generation that you know, I I didn't have a cell phone until I was twenty four, and. My kids don't believe that. <laughs> they think I'm joking. I think I'm lying about it. But I didn't. And then when I did get one, I barely used it. Like, it just was for, oh, in case I need to call somebody. It was and a whole different there was thing. No, there, were, there was no such thing. Obviously, you know, smartphones have developed so much in the last 10 years, it's unfathomable to me, like, what you've now got in your pocket. Um, but I'm on board with it. You know, I use my phone as much as the next person. You know, I, I, I slap my own wrists for... You know, sitting, looking at it, wasting an hour here and, you know, an hour there on a weekend when I should be doing something more productive. But I, I justify it by like, oh, no, well, I'm doing work. I'm doing I'm doing stuff for my Instagram. I'm doing stuff that's going to help promote me as a tattooer. 
and well, put food on my family's fallacy. table. What's that? Uh, that's a tattooer's fallacy. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. work. Yeah, it is. It is. It's <laughs> and a lot of, of times you are, but yeah. I yeah, know I that mean, I waste a lot of time that I, that I wish I can. Even just feeding the mind palace with you know imagery, like that's kind of work. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I see it that way too. But I, yeah. I I've been trying to limit myself more lately. Yeah, um, I need to do so. I need to do like a mass unfollow of people whose work is just clogging my arteries you know Ooh, who's gonna get it ah who knows <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> i love an unfollow session <laughs> i love it <laughs> i love a block session as well That's oh shit <laughs> do you block a lot of people no i don't i don't block a lot of people but um how do you earn a block from steve Byrne? uh just by saying something stupid you know like i'm i'm not a particularly political person i'm not a particularly hateful person you know there's certain things that I have opinions on and I have emotions about but if you're using your Instagram account to push agendas that I'm just either not interested in or I'm hearing about way too much like go away you know (laughs) like go away like use another forum yeah you know don't try and push your right wing or left wing agenda on me you know i'm just not interested yeah you know, in yeah there's a lot of, of that out there oh it's awful and i'm sh- i know of a handful of tattooers who unlike you they really put a lot of their personal opinion sprinkled within the work that they put out and mm-hmm. i can only imagine the effect that it has on their clientele oh i mean i think it's you know, people that disagree with them aren't going to get tattooed by them yeah. most likely because people are so polarized you've got to keep it out of the shop it's as simple as that you know um Sports, none of us are really that interested in, you know, sports. None of us are really that political in the shop. So it's kind of cool. It makes things easy. Yeah, it does. It keeps things very easy, you know. If you've got, like, if occasionally we'll have, you know, two customers sitting opposite each other and getting tattooed by two of us. And one will say something to the other about, oh, so you're a Aggies fan or so you're a UT fan or whatever, you know. And you'll get a little bit of banter backwards and forwards, nothing aggressive. But, you know, when someone's in the shop talking about their political opinion, I, especially if it's my customer, I, I crush it down immediately. I'm just like, no, dude, like we don't, I don't want to hear about, you know, this in the shop. It's just, it's not going to do any good. You know, we, yeah. everyone's here to kind of escape this stuff. You know, you walk into a tattoo shop, much the same as you walk into a, coffee shop or a cinema or something like that you know you just want to escape real life for a second you know you don't want to hear about you know north korea or (laughs) right right (laughs) whatever it is you know like yeah i feel like lately people talk about sports in a more fun way than ever before because politics are so exhausting oh yeah that i think that i think even sports banter is an escape from that yeah i mean i'm saying i'm not a sports fan but i am absolutely engrossed in the world cup right now just because of England's surprise run. And here we are, 24 hours away from finding out whether we're going to be in the World Cup final. Well, by the time everyone hears this, it'll be, th- it'll be over. weeks old and everyone <laughs> will know how it turns out. So if you're curious to that cliffhanger, you can do a little searching for it. <laughs> yeah. I know there's not that many people in probably North America that care about the soccer World Cup, but... I find that a lot of people do. I, I mean, I hope there is. You know, I, I think it's been the best World Cup of my lifetime. Hell yeah. You had mentioned your, your own books that you had made. Um, and I, I feel that you always put a lot of attention to detail when you do stuff like that. Cause you don't just do a book, you'll yeah. do a, a special book or you'll do a box set with other yeah. stuff that comes with it. And to me that shows your, the, the attention to detail sh- tells me that you must be a collector yourself. Indeed. We kind of talked about this a little bit before yeah. starting the podcast today, but... I just said that pretending I didn't know that, I but know, I knew yeah. that. <laughs> but I'll, Well, just the way that, I mean, yes, I'm, I do have hoarding tendencies. Not like my house is very nice and clean. It doesn't look like an episode of Hoarders, but... But if you were a single bachelor somewhere, it might be well, up to the ceiling. Even be, no, even before, when I was a single bachelor, you know, my my house was, you know, clean and tidy and had everything in its right place, but that... I think a lot of that comes from... I'm a messy tattooer. Like, let's just get that out of the way straight away. Like, they, <laughs> they call my station at Rock of Ages the splash zone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not something I'm necessarily proud of, but in the moment, you know, I'm not going to worry about my pants getting, you know, splashed with a couple of spots of ink. But 
the books on one and two, the most recent flash that I just did and the red line drawing book that comes with that. Any any stuff, you know, flash set. Uh, the last time I did a flash set before this was 2013, which seems like a long time ago, but thankfully I've just been tattooing so consistently. I haven't had time to sit down and do a flash set, which, you know, like that's that's great. This one I pursued pretty much like every night for like three months. I just went for it. I just didn't do anything else after work other than work on this flash. I just felt the need to do a set. And uh, I was inspired. Yeah, the, the books and the, the layout and the presentation, it, it does, it just comes from being a collector. I mean, bookshelves and, you know, just being into music as well. You know, uh, anyone who's a collector of... Uh, or into punk, hardcore, metal, doom, black metal, whatever it is, they'll know the attention to detail that a lot of these maniacs have with their packaging. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I'm, in, I'm into it. You know, I have been for forever. You know, there's a whole corner of my house that my wife's just like, when are you getting rid of these CDs? <laughs> <laughs> like, never, actually. You know, Do you even have a CD it. player anymore? No, I don't even own a CD player. Right. <laughs> so I don't own a record artifacts. player. I don't own a CD player. All my music comes through Spotify or Sonos. I barely buy music anymore, um, but it doesn't stop me from having collected music for 25 plus years or whatever. And, you know, it's kind of sad in a way, but I've got, I've got more things I need to put my... I can't really justify going out and spending 200 bucks at the record store anymore, put it that way, you know? Whereas I used to do that when I was 20 and not even, you know, 25 or whatever, and not even think about it. Now it's like, now nah, I could probably do something more for my you know my kids need that money more than i do you know i'll need that uh the new pair of shoes more than i need a new record or whatever so you know it's one of those things it just comes with getting a little bit older but you know the the packaging situation yeah definitely I, there was nothing i enjoyed more than getting a book or a cd or an lp or whatever it was and sitting and opening it up and just like oh cool like look at the way that they did this and Look at the way that they did that, you know, um, and that's that's resonated with me to the point where, whenever I do anything creative myself outside of tattooing, or outside of actually like on skin, um, I want to make it the nicest thing I can possibly do. And if that means eating into the profit of this project, then so be it. I just want it to be cool, you know. Yeah, I think it goes a long way, and it makes people more apt to probably make sure to collect all of your things that you put out too. Yeah, because I try and limit it as well. You know, I mean, there's. There's definitely, uh, it surprises me sometimes when I announce something and it, it sells really well. And then, um, the, you know, when you put like a lot of effort into something, I think people appreciate that, but then you'll, you'll do another project and it won't sell quite as well. And you're like, ah, oh, well, I wonder, I wonder what people see, did see or didn't see in that, that caused it to be a success or a failure i mean nothing's a failure as long as it pays for itself you know like and that's that's all that's all that i'm not trying to make a profit from these things it's my job is you know I, I tattoo i don't need to make a profit off selling books and flash to people but it is nice when it's a success and i can do the next project with the money that i make from it you know yeah before we finish i would be i don't know the word i'd be i'd be very regretful if i didn't ask you about uh you recently tattooed Kesha, I saw on your page. I did. And I'm I'm not as much interested in that, actually, as I am in the response that you may have gotten from that. Because you put up a post where you said, here's all the info for people who have <laughs> asked. Did you get a ton of messages from, like, celebrity followers? I did. I mean, people who were just, you know, celebrity kind of, you know, they're obsessed with celebrity or whatever it is. I mean, I, honestly, um, first of all, I'd just like to say she was absolutely lovely and whatever you think about her music or her personality or her celebrity. I don't know anything about her other than the fact that I tattooed her and she was very, very nice. Um, it was a walk-in. It wasn't even, you know, I, I've actually tattooed her boyfriend a couple of times um, and he came by, wondered if he could get a walk-in that day. Just something small. And I was like, yeah, sure, you know. And then I didn't even know he was dating Kesha. She came in the shop. Uh she wanted to get tattooed too. And I actually didn't even know who she was. <laughs> I did not know who she was. You don't she collect just, her music? No, I mean, I just, you know, I'm I'm out of the, you know, I mean, my wife would have known who she was the second she walked in. I did not. I just, 
I actually saw her hand tattoo from Derek Snodgrass. And that was familiar. I was like, How, where have I seen that before? You know, like, and anyway, the boyfriend, his name's Brad, very cool guy. He's covered in cool tattoos. He was like, oh, yeah, we're on tour, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, cool. You're just like driving across Texas or whatever, you know? <laughs> and I knew they were from California. Uh, he's like, no, no, that's, this this is Kesha. She's on tour with Macklemore right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> no big oh, deal. Wow, okay. Well, I know those names for sure. Yeah. But that just comes from having, you know, it's on the periphery. I don't really pay much attention to that kind of stuff. Anyway, very, very nice. But I tattooed her. Um, my wife and her girlfriends went to the show the next night. I abstained. <laughs> as much as I would like to have gone, I had tattoos to do and just moving them around would have been a nightmare. Um, and then, yeah, she posted on her Instagram, which has about 2 million followers, that she got tattooed by me and uh, she got tattooed at Rock of Ages. I check in on the Rock of Ages Instagram every once in a while. I don't think there was many messages there, if any at all, actually. I got probably 40 to 50 direct messages that night from people with some very elaborate questions and some very simple questions. Things like, did you really tattoo Kesha? <laughs> Which I had to be like, yes, I really did tattoo Kesha. What did she get? Where is it on her body? What does it mean? You know, just like, you know, there was just, there was so many of them. It was difficult. And, you know, multiple questions, roughly the same sort of thing. So I just felt like I can't be sitting here DMing all these people back who have, you know, no real interest in tattoos at all. They just want to know their favorite celebrities reasons and have some sort of, you know, thing with me for having touched her. Well, do you, that, that's weird. Minutes, you do, you, do you get a sense that these were just curious people, like fans of hers, or were they yeah. reporter type people? Who no, were... I don't think there was any reporters. I mean, if there was, I I didn't get that at all. But uh, yeah. I certainly haven't had any media people reach out to me and ask about it. Um, but no, she was. Uh, so I just decided to put a post together. I actually, this is the this is the coolest part, which made me realize she was really down to earth. She was like, "I want you to come with." your wife and friends to the show tomorrow. I was like, okay, cool. Well, do I contact, can I get a contact number for your agent or will call or whatever it's going to be? She's like, no, here. And she, she gave me my, she gave me her cell phone number and we texted for about 48 hours, you know, after I tattooed her about, um, what she wants to get next. She's in next time she's in town, <laughs> what she wants to, you know, uh, what she wants to do. If I'm ever in California t tattoo wise, which I thought she was, I thought that was really cool and down to earth of her. Um, and I actually asked her, I was like, Hey, is it okay if I, you know, put this post out? Cause I've got a, I've been flooded with DMS regarding the tattoo. She was very cool about it. She was like, yeah, you can put whatever you want online. I don't care. And, um, so I did, I just gave like a general sort of Q and a, you know, that hopefully covered everything and got everyone's, uh, celebrity questions out of the way. And I'm not used to that. I don't tattoo celebrities particularly, you know, I don't think, you know, if I, if I have, I don't really, it doesn't really register who they are. There's been celebrities in and out of the shop. I'm, I'm not on a quest to tattoo celebrities at all. Like, I think. Isn't it weird when people make a career on just tattooing celebrities uh, and you never even actually see their work, but yeah, you know I mean, that they tattooed this person and that person. Yeah. I mean, I don't even see the benefit of it really other than, you know, I don't know, do, are people charging more money to you know, for tattooing the rock or whatever, you know, like, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean, are they, or David Beckham or whoever? Like, I don't think they are. I mean, well, they should be. I mean, if there's any side effect of being that kind of person, I don't know what other, maybe it's just an ego thing. Yeah. I saw uh, this one dude in New York, me and Thomas were watching his Instagram as he was tattooing all of the actors from Avengers Infinity War. He's, he was tattooing them. Uh, and we were all like, wow, that's, that's actually kind of cool. You know, like, They'd all just dropped into his shop in New York and got tattooed by him. It was like Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson all in the shop getting tattooed at the same time. That was that was kind of rad. I wouldn't have minded that happening. Um, but beyond that, like I'm not. I've you know, I really have no interest in the the celebrities that I have tattooed or you know minor celebrities. I suppose they're just 
they're nice people and everything. There's just there's really no benefit in tattooing them beyond the benefit of tattooing anyone. People were like, "Did you charge Kesha?" I'm like, "Yeah, of course I charge Kesha." Are you kidding me? Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, took up like an hour of my evening. Of course, you know, like drawing it and tattooing it. Like, of course I charged her. Why wouldn't I? Yeah, just another I mean, customer. I know that celebrities do expect, or maybe at this point expect um, things to be free in their world, but you know, short of it being like maybe a friend's wife or girlfriend or a friend i'm not gonna you know i'm gonna charge anyone who comes to get tattooed by me you know as you should yeah yeah because once you cross that line it's a dangerous place to be <laughs> once you <laughs> the give guy a who's up doing the, oh yeah he does yeah he's the guy that does them for free yeah. yeah well also giving it away as well i mean that that to me is like a i don't care if people think i'm an expensive tattooer because um i charge a certain hourly rate or i give a price based on what I can do in a certain amount of time because I'm pretty fast, like pretty efficient tattooer at this point. And if people think that 500 bucks for a tattoo is a lot of money, I would argue with that. I would say it's not. <laughs> I would say it's for, I think for the, for the quality that you're getting, I could argue that that was a pretty good price. But there is, there is definitely this thing of like, oh, you know, do you ever, you know, 80 bucks? What? Like, I'm like, dude, like 80 bucks is really nothing, you know? Like you probably spend that on coffee a week. Yeah. You know? Well, it's just compared to whatever notion they have of what tattoos should cost. So yes. Yeah. It's hard to know where people are at. Well, we were talking about this yesterday about uh, somebody who their father was annoyed at the cost of a tattoo because his 1970s prices weren't the same as they are right now, you know? It's like if you paid 40 bucks for a tattoo in 1970 that's the same as paying 200 bucks or more for a tattoo right now it has to be yeah the taxes on his house are twice as high his gas yeah. price is three yeah. times as high i don't know why tattooing is exempt from that because i hear it all the time or even if a t-shirt in the shop we charge like 20 or 25 bucks for a t-shirt in the shop depending on you know how much what? it costs for us to produce yeah people lose <laughs> their minds they're like why isn't it just 10 bucks you know and i'm like <laughs> because it's not it costs 92? us that to make it. You yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know? Like, look at that. It's got like three screens on the front, one on the sleeve, and two on the back. Like, how much do you think that that, you know, American apparel t shirt cost to make? Like, yeah. It was more than you think, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you're making, you know, if you're going to a concert and you're paying, like, I, 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 this is the thing. I don't understand. Again, I don't just understand why tattooing seems to be exempt from what people think they should be paying. I bought tickets to see Jawbreaker, which I'm missing because I'm up here. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> it was a hundred bucks for two tickets to see a band like, to see Jawbreaker. I was like, all right, well, kind of, you know, feel like that's a lot of money, you know, but it's not like, I mean, yeah. they're, you know, they're a band who can command that kind of fee for their performance, I suppose, you know? Well, I guess that, that could be a relative experience for you because you remember a band like Jawbreaker and you think, you know, I, I saw them for this much at this time. So yeah. now when you're spending, spending 100, it's... So really, it's the same thing for people who haven't been tattooed in 10 years. And exactly, yeah. Also, just... Um, yeah, no, that, that's, yeah, you, you made the point exactly there. You know, I was used to paying, you know, four pounds to see, you know, six bands. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> when I was 18, yeah. you know. Or, I mean, I'm privileged now in the sense that, you know, I work with, you know, Tony Hundle, the mayor of Austin. So I can't remember the last time I paid to get into a show, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he, uh, yeah, he can hook it up, you know, despite my accent, I live in the center of texas and love it there so please come and visit me there my books are actually never closed oh that's an important thing to point <laughs> out i'm wondering if people are going to be posting that they've been on the show and it says books closed and people are like oh fuck i was going to get tattooed and then i'm just ruining yeah. your flow no please don't associate my participation in this podcast with the fact that my books are closed they are not Fair and. enough. <laughs> Even though you're a celebrity tattoo artist now. Well, it's, it's, there's, a myth, there's a myth that floats around our shop that all of us are booked heavily into the future. And other than maybe Thomas, we're really not. I mean, you know, a couple of weeks out maximum, you know, for me, Tony and Katya. And I mean, that's kind of how I like to keep it anyway. But, you know, people are like, oh, I wanted to get tattooed in September 2019. Should I book now? I'm like, no, no. <laughs> you're, you're good for another like 
six months to a year, just contact me when you know the dates you're actually going to be in Austin. Yeah. I think that's a common myth for a lot of uh, more, more followed tattooers. Well, certainly in recent years, I think there was definitely a time where, you know, I mean, even myself, actually, when I lived in the UK, I had my shop in Leeds in England. And I think at one point I was about eight months out, which was overwhelming. It was too much, really. And I wouldn't want to return to that kind of thing. You know, I was doing 12 years in that city at that point. So when you're when you anywhere for a good amount of time, and there was very few tattoo shops in that city at that time as well, you're going to get a lot of work coming your way, you know? That's a city of like a million people probably. And I, you know, when I worked there, there was like six tattoo shops. It's great. Everyone was as busy as they could, as they wanted to be, you know? Now there's like 30 or 40, I think, you know? Yeah. So... So no one's booked out eight months, probably. No, no I, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, there might be some, you know, line drawing kind of <laughs> thousand dollar minimum poses <laughs> who are, but <laughs> I'll never know because that will never be me. Right. So. Well, good thing. Yeah. Otherwise, no one would listen to you on a podcast, potentially. <laughs> or maybe they would. I would. I don't know. Well, <laughs> thanks for asking me to be on this. It's Thanks for doing it. I really appreciate it. It's, yeah. That, I was apprehensive about you know, how articulate or comfortable I would be doing this, but it's been fun. Well, I'm sure people will let you know in the comments. Yeah, let's please bring it on. Yeah, I'm looking forward to an unfollow book. (laughs) (laughs) An an unfollow block session. (laughs) Another thank you to this week's sponsor, Tatsoul, and to our guest, Steve Byrne. You can follow him on Instagram at Steve underscore Byrne underscore Tattoo. And also check out his shop, Rock of Ages, in Austin, Texas, on Instagram, at Rock of Ages Tattoo. You can follow me on Instagram, at Andrew Stortz. If you like this show, please give a rating or a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to it. You can check out all the additional information about this show on our website, booksclosedpodcast.com, which includes show notes and videos. We've also got a voicemail line now where you can call in and leave a comment or a question that can be played in future shows. So give it a call, 857-444-0662. Just do it, it'll be fun. We can pretend we're on the radio even though we're not. So let's circle back here next week, same time, same place, and we'll have a new episode. Goodbye now.